In this video, we'll be looking at writing absolute value functions as piecewise defined functions. The first function is f of x equals 1 plus the absolute value of x. The process for writing a piecewise defined function from an absolute value function is to investigate, look at, what the function looks like for different values of x. Well, when x is not negative, that is greater than or equal to 0, it's just going to look the same because if you plug in a positive number for x into an absolute value, you just get that positive number back out. So when x is greater than or equal to 0, then the function just looks like 1 plus x. We've taken out the absolute value bars. What about if x is less than 0? Well, x is less than 0. Whenever you plug in a negative into an absolute value, that is the absolute value of the opposite of x, um, you get out the, the opposite of what you plugged in there. So if you plugged in negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 equals positive 3. So you, what gets put out is the opposite of that. So in general, this is going to come up handy for all of these absolute value uh, functions. When x is less than 0, the function will be simply, everything else will be held the same, but every time you see absolute value, it's just the opposite of whatever is inside that absolute value. And in this case, we only have x inside the absolute value, so that's what we'll do, just the opposite of x. So that gets to be just 1 minus x. So these are our two pieces, 1 minus x and 1 plus x, and it's for these conditions. So to write it in our algebraic notation for writing piecewise defined functions, f of x equals, and then we put this large bracket, well, it equals 1 minus x, usually we start with the lower x value first, so 1 minus x when x is less than 0, and 1 plus x when x is greater than or equal to 0. All right, let's go on to the next one. g of x equals the absolute value of x plus 3 over x plus 3. We do exactly the same thing, so we're going to say whenever x is a, a certain value, then we're going to make this whole thing uh, negative or the whole thing positive. But it's not just going to be at 0 this time, it's going to be at negative 3. That's just a coincidence that I did this example with negative 3 over here. Because negative 3 plus 3, that's the, the breaking point where we get this inside the absolute value to be 0. So that's what you have to look at first. Now, I would say that negative 3 would be included, but if we plugged in negative 3 here, we would have 0 in the denominator, and so um, that would be undefined. So we can't have a negative 3 in this domain. So whereas we had the uh, greater than or equal to here, in this case, we're just going to have x is just strictly greater than, but it's going to be negative 3 in this case. So when x is negative 3, or greater than negative 3, then this just looks the same. This is just x plus 3 over x plus 3. That's our function. Ah, this just cancels out then to just be 1. When x is less than negative 3, then what is inside of here would be negative, and so will be the opposite of that. So then our function, g of x, will equal the opposite of x plus 3, and then just x plus 3 is still in the denominator. And notice we've done the opposite of what was inside of the absolute value. So now we have negative over a positive, and these two things cancel, so we end up with just a negative 1. So then g of x equals negative 1. So those are, are the two uh, the pieces, depending on these two different um, intervals for x. So again, writing this in interval note or piecewise defined notation, we get it like this, and we say when, I'll do it this way this time, when x is less than negative 3, then our function is simply negative 1. But when, this is a comma here, when x is greater than negative 3, our function is defined as just 1. All right, I hope that helps.